Hello everyone, Denise here. Today I'm going to show you how to make the Zoe poncho. This is very easy. Anyone can do it. Very simple stitches and it creates this beautiful, beautiful poncho. This is the textured daisy stitch and I've been featuring this on my channel. I will link below the tutorials that I have done in this stitch and uh, get you started with the materials that I used for this poncho. And I'm going to use loops and threads carousel twist. This is 100% acrylic. It is 213 yards, 5.3 ounces, 195 meters, 150 grams. Calls for a 5.5 millimeter hook. I'm going to use a larger hook uh, so it has better drape and movement. It is a bulky five. It is sort of like a heavy four instead of a five, you know, like Serenity Chunky is definitely larger than this. This is Serenity Chunky. This is a bulky weight five. So you can see the difference there. So it is smaller. It's more like a heavy worsted. I'm guessing that's why an eye hook is recommended, but I'm going to go up to a K. So this has fantastic drape. So uh, you use as many as you need for the size that you're making. And I will leave a, a list of sizes down below for uh, heads and ages so that you have an idea of how large to make your foundation single crochet so that it will fit over the person's head. Color is pink lemonade. It is 100% acrylic. So I'm going to grab my K hook, which is a uh, 6.5 millimeter. This is a Clover Amour. So I am going to start with 36 foundation single crochet chains. If you want to use a foundation chain, you can. Just make sure that you have a chain that's going to fit over someone's head that you're making it for. Uh, foundation single crochet chain, it's stretchier. So uh, it's very easy. It's not hard to do. I can show you how. So you make a slip knot, I wrap it around my finger, then I poke the working yarn through and pull. It makes an adjustable slip knot like that. Foundation single crochet. I have a video on that and I'll link that below if you want to just go take a look at doing that. But this is how you do it. You chain two to begin and then you go in back into the first chain here. Yarn over and pull up a loop. I hold it right here with my finger. Yarn over, pull through one. Okay. Yarn over, pull through two. That's one foundation single crochet. That one that I was holding, we're going to go into that loop or leg. Yarn over, pull up. I grab here after I go through that loop once. So right here I grab. Yarn over, go through two more. Going back into the one I grabbed. Yarn over, pull through. Go through two. You repeat that over and over until you have your 36 foundation single crochets and as you're working your foundation it will go this way and then we'll join and it will be in the round so keep working your foundation single crochets until you get to whatever number that you want just make sure that your multiples for yours if you are not doing 36 that you're doing multiples of three that is divisible by four as well. With this size of yarn and this hook, this should fit an adult. But if you want to do any other chain than 36, it will have to be multiples of three that can be divisible by four. So I will meet back up with you in just a moment when I have my foundation single crochet chain done. I'm going to measure. So 
so you know how long my foundation single crochet chain is. About 18 inches long, so that should fit over any adult size head. Uh, this yarn is very boingy or stretchy, so depending on the yarn that you're using, make sure that you have enough stretch or give to your chain to where it will fit over the head that you're making it for. So we're going to join in the round now and we are going to work the body of the poncho. And this is how I join my foundation single crochet chain for this poncho. I go into this first loop like we are going to do another stitch and pull up a loop. Make sure not to twist your chain and bring it up here. Your tail will be at the bottom and your chain will not be twisted if you're holding it just like this. Okay, and we're not gonna go into the first stitch here. We're gonna go into this little part right before it. We're gonna yarn over. We're gonna pull up through this one and we're gonna pull up through this one and then we're gonna slip stitch to the first stitch. And now we're joined. Now we're gonna start our patterning and we're gonna start off right away with an increase. And our increases will be the corners and you should get stitch markers for them. So if you don't have a stitch marker on the next round, it will be a little hard to know where you need to increase. So I highly recommend getting four, at least four stitch markers. Five would be more helpful. So. I'm gonna grab mine and I'll be right back to you. All right, so I have my five stitch markers and we're going to increase right here, right as we begin, okay? So we're gonna put three single crochets in the first stitch, but first we're gonna chain one. So one, two, three single crochets. And we're gonna chain two, one and two going to put three more single crochets in that same stitch. One, two, and three. We are going to mark our chain two space because that's one of our corners we're going to increase on and we're going to mark our first stitch here that we made. Okay. Now we're gonna skip this stitch right here, right after our corner. And we're gonna go into the next stitch. And we are going to put three single crochets in that stitch. So skip one, three single crochets in the next. One, two, and three. Skip one three single crochets. One, two, and three. Skip one. Next one, three single crochets. One, two, and three. Skip one. We're going to do an increase here. So, one, two, Three single crochets, chain two, three more single crochets in that same stitch. One, two, and three. Now we're going to mark that corner because we want to make sure that we increase on that corner. We want to make sure that our corners are marked so every even round we increase. Every odd round we do not increase. And we even switch it up to the middle stitch of our odd round so that we can remember where we're increasing. Okay, so we're skipping the next one. Sometimes you have to move the stitches over to see this one, 
but we're skipping the one right after this corner here. And then in the next one, three single crochets. Skip one, next one, three single crochets. One, two, and three. Skip one, three single crochets in the next. One, two, and three. And last time we did three sets of three, we're gonna do the four sets of three. So we have our corner stitch, and then we have one, two, three, and then we have a corner stitch. So in between our corner stitches, we have three sets of three. On this side, we're gonna have four. So we have our corner, which doesn't count. One, two, three, now we need one more set of three. So skip one, and then three single crochets right here in the next stitch. Now we have our four. One, two, three, and four. Now we're gonna increase. So skip one stitch and increase. Three single crochet. Chain two, three single crochet. Mark that chain two space. Skipping our next stitch, going into the next stitch, putting three single crochet. One, two, and three. Skip one, next one, three single crochet. One, two, three. Skip one, next one, three single crochet. One, two, three. Now we need three sets of three, excluding the corner. So one, two, three. We have our three sets of three. Now we're gonna increase. So skip one, next stitch, increase. Three single crochet, chain two, three single crochet. Marking that last corner here with the stitch marker. Skip one, three single crochet in the next. One, two, three. Skip one, three single crochets in the next. Skip one, three single crochets in the next. One, two, three. Skip one, three single crochets in the next. One, two, three. Skipping our last one and going over to our very first mark stitch here, we are going to slip stitch into the st stitch, and this will be the only round that we do this slip stitching into that very first stitch. And now we're gonna work into the next stitch right here for our round three. We're gonna put three single crochets. One, two, and three. Now instead of marking the first one here, I'm going to mark the second one because next time around, we're gonna work right into that stitch. We're not gonna slip stitch at all, okay? So I want to take a look at the work real quick here so that you can kind of understand as we go. So we have the same amount of stitches on this side is this side and this side is this side. If you're working the 36 foundation single crochet like I, I started with, you can check your work by checking your groups of three. So excluding the corners in between we have one, two, and three. On this side, we have one, two, and three because we're excluding the corners. We're not looking at the corners at all. So one, two, three, one, two, three. 
On this side, we have four. One, two, three, and four. On this side, we have four. One, two, three, and four. So we can keep track of our work and make sure we're on task as far as stitch count just by counting the groups of three that we have. This side and this side should match. This side and this side should match. Okay, so round one was foundation single crochet. Round two was increasing. And round three will not be increasing. We're just going to work into our existing stitches. So every middle single crochet we have, we're going to put three single crochets in them. In each corner, each chain two space corner, we're going to put three single crochets in them as well. And when we take our stitch marker out, we're going to put it into the middle single crochet. So we did our first three single crochets here at the beginning of the round in our middle single crochet. So now we're going over to our chain two space and we're going to do three single crochets. Two, three, take your stitch marker out, put it in the middle single crochet. That way next round you know where to increase. So looking at our next set of three, one, two, and three right here, we're going to go into the middle single crochet and put three single crochets. Moving over to the next middle single crochet, three in it. Moving over, next middle single crochet, we put three single crochets in it. And we're going to keep repeating that all the way around. Each corner will get three single crochets and each middle single crochet of our groups of three, we'll get three single crochets in them. So I will meet right back up to you when I get to the end of this round. Okay, so at the end of round three, your work will look like this. We will be moving on to round four, which is an increase round. And from here on out, you're going to just repeat the increase round and the non-increase round. So we have our stitch marker on the middle stitch here. So we're just going to work into the middle stitch, putting three single crochets in it. One two, and three, replacing that stitch marker in the middle stitch there so we know where to put our work. And then we're to the corner over here, so then we're going to increase because we're on an even round. We're going to do three single crochet, chain two, three single crochet. Our stitch marker back in that chain two space. Look at our next set of three and put three single crochet in that middle single crochet. So this is a repeat of round two. Next round will be a repeat of round three. So you will repeat round two and round three until you have the size of poncho that you want. Just remember that on even rounds you increase, on odd rounds you do not increase. So I have finished that round. Again, you will repeat round two and round three for the entirety of your project. You can end on either round, uh, but if you end on an increase round, you will have pronounced corners. If you end on a round that is not an increase round, 
it will be more of a rounded corner. So just keep that in mind. Maybe the yarn will determine when we're done, right? That usually is when we're done is when we run out. So <laughs> I will meet back up with you when I get my poncho done. So I'll see you in a moment. All right, so I am to the size that I want to stop. I actually made a cardboard model so that I knew how far to go as far as shoulder width and length of torso. I looked up those measurements online, found out average five-year-old has a nine and a half inch span from shoulder to shoulder. And torso, it really depended. Like there were a lot of things online, but no set amount. So I went with around 15 inches from shoulder to like belly button area or um, I don't know, I guess a little below your belly button area, like the, the top of your bum. Uh, so we'll see how I am on that because I did not measure that. I, I did make sure that the neck would be okay, although I do think I will probably do the neck in a single crochet just to maybe maybe bring it in a bit because on my model it's mm, it's kind of loose and if it was worn in any way and moving a lot it could end up slipping off shoulders okay so you can't see it but right now I'm right at about 16 inches for length from shoulder to the tip of the poncho so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut um, my yarn down here I'm going to weave in the ends I'm going to start up here and I'm going to just, you can join anywhere and I'm just going to do a round of single crochet. Sorry that the camera is moving. I am having a hard time showing the poncho um, without bumping it. So all you need to do when you're finishing off your poncho, when you get around, and I don't know if I said this in my previous video because it's been a minute since I recorded that. Uh, just slip stitch into your last last stitch there where you would normally put three. Just slip stitch into it and then pull through and and you're done. So that that's that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull through and then I'm gonna weave in all of my ends, which I used. Uh, so I had started a poncho and then I just disconnected that. So I do believe two of these would make this size poncho, though I can't be exact. I will weigh this when I get the neck done and then I'll let you know what the ounces are on this and then we'll know how much will actually take to make this poncho. I think an adult poncho you'd probably want at least four of the carousels. By the way, I really like this yarn. This is really nice, really nice yarn. Uh, I, I'm probably going to go pick up more because I really like their colorways and uh, it's, it's really good quality, guys. If you haven't been to Michael's to check it out, I highly recommend you do. It is one of the good ones and um, it seems like every time I like a Michael's yarn, they get rid of it. So I'm going to pick up more before they do. Um, just join in anywhere, anywhere you want, and then um, single crochet all the way around. That's what I'm going to do just to finish out. Chain one, and then I'm just going to single crochet nice and loose all the way around because this was a foundation single crochet that I did. I don't, I don't want to really ruin that integrity of it, but uh, I do think that it is too loose for her shoulders. I will do this. I'll be back to you in just a minute. I'll show you what I did with cardboard. Maybe, maybe you'd be interested in doing the same, but I will be right back. Okay, so this is my cardboard. Uh, this is like the size fitter. <laughs> the um the mannequin if you will to decide how long to make the poncho how wide to make the neck so the shoulder width here is about nine and a half inches 
the torso from the shoulder down to here. Uh, I think is around 16 inches and then I made it to where it can kind of stand up 16 inches by the way uh, it's not something that you would want to like set out to sell unless you made this more sturdy this is literally made with the inserts to calendars uh, the cardboard from that so if you have something more substantial you could do the same uh, I'm gonna put it on the the model here and then I'll take a picture and show it to you. Okay, so this is it on my mannequin, which is not what I made it for. You can see the neck is pretty small on the mannequin, uh, but this gives you an idea of how much it would go, two balls of this yarn would go on an adult. It's not bad, it's not bad at all. It's actually pretty cute. But I would think one to two more balls of this yarn would be good. Uh, the ounces on this when I weighed it was nine ounces. So it's actually under two balls. Uh, it's up to you what size you want to make. But this should give you a good idea of how far two will go. And then you can go from there. Okay, so this is the cardboard that I made for the poncho to kind of roughly get an idea of what it will be like on our granddaughter. Hopefully I can get a picture of her in it um, from her mom and then I can show you guys what it looks like on actual human instead of cardboard and mannequin. But uh, I think this will be perfect on her. I'm hoping it will be. Uh, I will update with you with a picture on the community page if she provides me one. So. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I appreciate you. Until next time, guys.